Here's your first warned weather forecast first. Sponsored by Anderson Collision Center. Visit triveanderson.com. It was a warm afternoon across the state line. Temperatures made their way up into the upper 70s for a lot of us, even into the low 80s for some across the southern portions of the state line. Now that did provide some fuel for potential thunderstorms as we got later on into the night. However, most of those thunderstorms have been trending further and further south across parts of central Illinois. Temperatures now into the lower 70s for a lot of us here across the state line. Those thunderstorms, as I mentioned, starting to work their way closer to the area. A few spotty showers could be at least potential possible later on here into the overnight hours. However, we do have more rounds of thunderstorms as we get into later in the weekend. A very hot and humid day tomorrow with temperatures into the 80s. I'll track down and break down the details and timing of those thunderstorms, though, coming up in your most trusted forecast a little later. Live from WTVO Rockford and your home team, Eyewitness News at 10 starts now. A mass shooting in Texas leaves multiple people dead, including the gunman. A state line high school coach is accused of planting a camera recording device in a locker room. We'll look at what he's being charged with. One of the biggest days in sports gets a big celebration. We'll see those festivity, what those festivities were celebrating the Kentucky Derby. Good evening, I'm Jess Lipson. Taylor Castro is off tonight. Thanks for joining us. Eight people are dead and seven more badly injured after a gunman opened fire at an outlet mall in Allen, Texas. Hundreds of shoppers ran into stores for cover and were later evacuated. Police say the shooter is also dead. Here's ABC's Jim Ryan with the details. A massive police response after gunfire erupted at an outlet mall in Texas. We got shots fired at the outlet mall. Got people running. One of our officers was on an unrelated call at the outlet mall. He heard gunshots, went to the gunshots, engaged the suspect and neutralized the suspect. Hundreds of shoppers were escorted out of the Allen Premium Outlets just north of Dallas Saturday afternoon. Many seen walking with their hands above their heads. There's this guy dressed in all black, wearing a vest, has an assault rifle, and he's just shooting at people. The shooting occurred at about 3.30 p.m. local time, with numerous victims taken to the hospital. Found seven deceased individuals on scene. We transported nine individuals to the hospital to area trauma facilities. Of those that we transported, two have since died. Three are in critical surgery, and four are stable. As the situation unfolded, the city issued a public safety alert warning residents to stay away from the area. Multiple agencies are on the scene to assist in the investigation, including the FBI and ATF. We have a multi-agency response helping us work the scene. They helped us evacuate the mall. We've set up reunification areas. Investigators believe the gunman acted alone. And we don't believe that there's another threat at this time. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has issued a statement saying, our hearts are with the people of Allen, Texas tonight during this unspeakable tragedy, adding that he's offered local authorities the full support of the state. Jim Ryan, ABC News, Allen, Texas. A Janesville coach is arrested, accused of putting a video camera in a school locker room. Friday, a resource officer at Craig High School was told of a recording device in one of the girls' locker rooms. Janesville police and the school then started an investigation, which led to a search warrant being issued for a home on Lexington Drive. The suspect was identified as 38-year-old Brian Kitzman. Kitzman coached various sports at the high school. He was arrested and charged with possession of child pornography and violation of, a privacy, of privacy of a person under the age of 18. Kitzman is being held in the Rock County Jail. 18 residents are being displaced after a duplex catches fire in Janesville. Fire crews were called to a home on Newman Street, just north of Mount Zion Avenue, around 8.15 last night. When they arrived, they found flames coming from a bedroom. The fire was quickly put out. One resident was injured and treated at the scene. Fire damage is estimated to be $100,000. The cause of the fire is still under investigation. The American Red Cross is assisting all of those that are displaced. One person is seriously injured after a crash in Boone County. Friday night, first responders were called to the intersection of Route 76 and Squaw Prairie Road for a two-vehicle accident. Little is known at the moment, but a car sustained major damages. A truck was also involved. One person was transported to the hospital with serious injuries. Their condition is unknown at the moment. An investigation into what caused the crash is ongoing. Illinois State Police have released the name of five additional people who lost their lives in a major accident on Interstate 55 last week. 
They are 73-year-old Joseph and 71-year-old Donna Bates of Crystal Lake. Also killed were 64-year-old Michael and 54-year-old Amy Zinchuk of Champaign. The name of the fifth victim is 64-year-old Earl Legrand of Florissant, Missouri. The first victim of the accident released last week was 88-year-old Shiley Harper of Franklin, Wisconsin. Officials are still working to identify the remaining victim. 37 people were taken to hospitals with injuries ranging from minor to life-threatening. That pileup happened when a strong winds caused brownout conditions from soil being kicked up from adjacent farm fields. 72 cars and trucks were involved in the pileup. A federal ruling blasts Chicago planners for not equipping more of their intersections with audible signals. The ruling would help blind pedestrians cross busy streets. Less than three dozen of Chicago's nearly 3,000 intersections with visual crossing signals are equipped with audible cues. Some in the blind community say crossing the street now fills them with anxiety. Because Chicago is a large city, there are additional complications when we're using those orientation and mobility skills uh, when we're listening to what's going on around us. I've had several close calls uh, and been lucky that I got knocked backwards and not under the wheel. Chicago residents say this is long overdue. A future hearing will determine how many intersections must be upgraded and by when. Striking Writers Guild members took a break from the picket lines today, but that doesn't mean a deal is imminent. There's been no progress between the thousands of show and movie writers and the major studios they work for. The writers want higher pay and more transparency about streaming data. They announced the strike Tuesday, forcing some studios to call off shows, including tonight's edition of Saturday Night Live. The last writer strike was in 2007 and continued for 100 days. Several TikTok influencers are moving on to a new app, partially based on partnerships to promote it. Lemon 8 is a mix between Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok. It launched in the U.S. in the U.S. earlier this year amid hearings over whether TikTok should be banned. However, it could face the same scrutiny as it appears to be owned by the same company. Reuters has reported Lemon 8 is overseen by an executive who used to lead TikTok and works for its owner, ByteDance. One of the biggest festivals in Illinois went down in the Forest City. Every year, the Don Carter Derby Party hosts hundreds of horse racing fans. It all took place at Shooter's Bar and Grill and Don Carter Lanes. Food trucks are lined up, plenty of specialty drinks to enjoy, and live music was there. There was also Kentucky Derby hats being sold and plenty of people to enjoy the annual race with. This Kentucky Derby Party is huge. We have it every year. It's always on the first Saturday of May. It gets really, really, really busy. It also was an opportunity for sports betting for those hoping they were lucky enough to pick the winning horse. We'll have more from the race later in the show during sports. Local mo motorcyclists bringing awareness to safe driving in the state line. Coming up, we'll hear from those promoting safe driving habits while enjoying the nice weather on the road. And temperatures made their way into the upper 70s here today, low 80s even for a few, but that's fueling some storms across central Illinois tonight. And more rounds of storms coming in for us later on here in the weekend. I'll time those out for you coming up in just a few minutes. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Taylor Castro, Reagan Holgate, and meteorologist Jordan Wolf. As the weather starts to warm up in the state line, residents will see more than just cars and trucks on the road. Our Nikel Delgado has more. It's awesome, you know, it's to make the people around us aware that it is motorcycle riding season. For over 30 years, motorcyclists have kick-started their riding season with the Safety and Awareness Parade. Motorcyclists Kim Tanner and Stacy Gutierrez tell me they have been riding for years and safety is still the number one most important thing for all motor vehicles. This is an awareness parade. If one person is aware, it saves one life. That's exactly. a start. The parade started at Carlson Ice Arena and ended at Kegel Harley-Davidson, where riders were served lunch. The vice president of Kishwaukee Valley Chapter, Kurt Hewson, says motorcycles move, stop, and react differently than cars do on the road. I mean, you hear of tragic stuff already this year, you know, and people just have to remember that we're out there, uh, share the road, and we have to reciprocate. We have to do the same thing. We, we don't command any more space or rights than uh, anybody driving any other automotive. If people would to put down your phones and be aware of what's going on around you, that would be awesome. 
Kim and Stacy say it's vital for drivers to be cautious that they are sharing the road with motorcyclists. We're wives, moms, grandmas. grandmas. So, yeah, we'd like to go home to them. Look twice, save a life is our motto. So look twice before you pull out in an intersection or take off at a stoplight. Make sure there's not a motorcycle coming the other direction. Reporting in Rockford for your home team, I'm Nikel Delgado. Organizers stress for drivers to double check your blind spots, intersections, and leaving a car distance away. For motorcyclists, it's strongly encouraged to take more than one motorcycle safety class. Another day in the 70s across the state line that leads to storm chances tonight and throughout the weekend. Coming up, Jordan times them out for us in the first warn forecast later. Now, your first warn weather forecast from meteorologist Jordan Wolf. The temperatures for the afternoon made their way all the way up into the upper 70s and even into the low 80s for a couple of spots across the state line. Now later on into the evening, things have started to at least cool down just a little bit with many temperatures back down into the 70s and in the upper 60s in some spots. But notice these dew points are a lot higher than where they were yesterday with many of those dew points up in the 50s and even into the 60s. That is allowing for some fuel for some of these scattered showers and even a few storms here later on into the evening. The majority of these so far have been staying much further south across parts of central Illinois. However, as we get later on into the evening and overnight hours tonight, a few spottier showers cannot be ruled out here locally across the state line. There have been some that have been firing up across parts of areas just to the west of us and have even produced some small hail in the suburbs of Chicago. Now, as we get later on into the night tonight, as I mentioned, those showers and storms do have a lot of clouds that come with that. And those clouds and the moisture that we have do not allow temperatures to fall very far into the overnight hours tonight. So we're only down to 60 degrees for that overnight low, not too far away from our normal high temperature for this time of year. Tomorrow we're a lot warmer and we get with those storms that come through overnight tonight, things calm down quite a bit. We check out Futurecast though, we'll get some of those spottier showers and even a few storms possible later on into the overnight hours tonight, mainly going to come in after midnight. So there is a, a potential for a few of those chances to come in as we get into the hours just after midnight. Things calm down and quiet out a lot as we get into the early part of tomorrow. Temperatures, as I mentioned, warm back up into the 80s for the afternoon tomorrow. It's going to be a very hot and humid day comparatively, especially what we've had as of late with dew points that will be in the 60s. Temperatures into the 80s going to feel like a very hot and humid summer day compared to especially what we've had over the last few days. We get a lot of that sunshine mixing in for the early part of the day. Clouds start to roll in and we can't rule out a spottier shower or two during the early part of the over or at least early part of the evening hours tomorrow. Showers and even few storms do increase in coverage though as we get into the overnight hours tomorrow night right around that 9, 10, 11 o'clock hour tomorrow evening. The main threats with the potential for those is going to be damaging winds and possibly even some small hail. So the rounds of thunderstorms we're going to be dealing with, the first one coming in later tonight, could have some small hail associated with it. That second round that comes in late tomorrow night and into the evening, that could have some damaging winds are going to be the main threat, but also some hail possible with those as well. We get once again those scattered showers and even a few thunderstorms possible as we get into Monday. There is some severe Severe weather risks at least for the next couple of days so something to keep an eye on for both later tonight and tomorrow going into tomorrow evening. Temperatures start to fall back though as we get into Monday back down into the 70s and just we're sticking with the 70s all the way through the end of the week. Thank you Jordan. Reagan's in next with sports. Bears rookie camp continued today over at Hallis Hall with guys looking to impress and the Packers have some new young offensive weapons. We'll hear from them next. with Reagan Holgate. Day two of Bears rookie camp means another day for these youngsters to try and prove why they deserve a spot on that roster. Now much of the hype right now and rightfully so is focused on the top pick offensive lineman Darnell Wright. But it's in the third round where many draft experts felt the Bears made their best pick. Ryan Poles said the Bears were shocked he was even still on the board at 115. Running back Roshan Johnson out of Texas is trying to show his versatility as a top flight running back and a special team standout. All the different things that he did in Texas too, I think that's really cool. As you guys know, we like to have guys that can do as many different things as possible. Um, and so he really gives us a lot of really cool flexibility too. So. Uh, 
he's a guy who doesn't really get phased and can learn a lot. You know, he already just in these in this one practice, you know, proved that he's able to handle a lot. Now over to Packers rookie camp. Green Bay drafted three receivers to surround first-year quarterback Jordan Love. His weapons are young this upcoming season with second-year guys like Christian Watson and Romeo Dobbs holding it down as veterans. But the young class of pass catchers are eager to come together as a unit. Their first task at hand is to learn the Packer way throughout minicamp and beyond. For the guys who play wide receiver here at Green Bay, I'm sure they can say that uh, you got to be pretty smart to play the position, but um, nothing that I can't handle. I'm learning all that I need to right now. So I mean, we all together in this. Uh, we all come together and, you know, find ways to win. And, you know, I'm just here to add value where I can. And, you know, those guys, we're a team. So, you know, we're going to all get around each other and support each other and help us, you know, thrive. You know, everybody want to be in a group that want to work, you know, want to be the best. But, you know, being in a young group that I'm in, um, I feel like we can all, you know, relate because, you know, everybody just coming into the league. You know, being around some young guys is, is fun. All right, more action from Wrigley Field coming your way today. The Cubs looking for back-to-back -back wins. It's been a minute since we saw that. Kerry Wood threw out the first pitch in honor of the 25th anniversary of his 20 strikeout performance. Let's go to the third inning, and the Marlins are already up a run here. And Jorge Soler takes Drew Smiley deep, and that puts the Cubs in a 2-0 hole pretty early on here. But to the eighth inning, and it's Trey Mancini. He lifts a shallow one into center field. Peyton Burdick blinded by the sun and can't make the catch. The ball goes off of his leg, and Mancini gets to second base. That helps set up this play with runners in scoring position. Nick Madrigal goes the other way, and the Cubs bring two Two home, three to two lead for the good guys. Next batter, it's Miguel Amaya. He takes this one up the middle. The infielders can't make the play there, and Madrigal scores Amaya's first career hit and RBI. His parents were loving it, and so were the Cubs fans. Cubs win, four to two. The White Sox dropped game two to the Red Sox, five to three. Series finale is tomorrow, and we got some news on Eloy Jimenez. He underwent surgery today. For appendicitis, the recovery for that is four to six weeks. In Beloit, the Sky Carp continued their series against the West Michigan Whitecaps. Lefty Zach King was the Sky Carp starting pitcher. He did his job today, pitched six shutout innings and struck out seven batters. Bottom of the second, catcher Andrew Fernandez singles. Brady Allen scored for a 1-0 Sky Carp lead. The big moment came in the bottom of the sixth inning, though. Skycarp third baseman Joshua Zamora crushes the ball to the outfield. It went all the way to the fence. He's not the fastest guy in baseball, but he was going for it. Third base, and he got the green light, sending him home. Zamora made it all the way for an inside-the-park home run. The Skycarp won 4-0, improving their record to 16-9. They'll host the Whitecaps again tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And two of the greatest minutes in sports has been cockered by Mage. Mage won the 149th Kentucky Derby, edging out two fills and Angel of Empire. Mage entered the race with 16 to 1 odds, but came out on top and earned $1.86 million for seizing first place. That's sports. We'll be right back. So it seems like really nice temperatures outside, but there could be some storms. So am I going to be able to go walking or hang out, you know, outside? Well, actually, the majority of the day tomorrow is actually going to be fairly dry. And we're actually okay. going to be a lot warmer for the afternoon as well. So it's going to look like a very nice summer-like afternoon. However, Jess, you might want to bring the water bottle with you because it's going to be humid out. Uh, the first one interactive radar from Rockford Auto Glass and more not showing up anything at the moment, but a little bit further off to the south and the southwest. There are some storms that are rolling through later on here into the night tonight. As we get into the rest of the weekend, that is not our only chance for storms either. We have another chance that comes in later Sunday evening. So the afternoon is dry, but the evening does bring another chance for storms. Once again, scattered showers and storms on Monday and then drying out for the rest of the week. Thank you for joining us. Have a great rest of your night.